between the ages of 8 and 18 in the late 1990s and loved cars, there's one arcade game you probably remember. It had a racing bucket, it had a real steering wheel and three massive screens. It was the Ferrari 355 Challenge Simulator by Sega and it was mind-blowing. Not just for the graphics, but for the sound. This is a Ferrari 355 Challenge Evo. There are 109 of them made. Out of 109 of them, probably the vast majority were crashed by drivers or people like me. In the late 90s, if you wanted to go racing a Ferrari, this is what you bought. Now this one was modified by Modificata to become street legal. What does that mean? Well, street tires, street exhaust, and the interior was restored because most of these cars end up getting their interior gutted to save weight for racing. A car like this will cost you about $300,000 nowadays. But what if you wanted a Ferrari 355 with this sort of performance without that price tag? You get this. a Ferrari 355 with race car parts on it. Uh, you might be asking me, why does that matter so much, Rob? Well, after the 355, Ferrari realized how much people wanted race car parts on street cars. And so the 360 got the Challenge Sudale, the 430 got the Scuderia, and that class of car was born. But the 355 never got that. And so this one's been modified to be like the race car, but street legal. The first thing I realized about this car, the piston engines rev all the way up to 8,500 RPM, and they sound so good doing that. A lot of people, including myself, grew up thinking exotics, untouchable. You cannot modify an exotic. It comes from the factory. It's got to have custom gold, special titanium, platinum parts that are untouchable. But as we've gone on, we've realized that that's not the case. These cars, just like almost all the other cars in the late 90s or even earlier than that, were capable of being modified. They weren't necessarily perfect. They definitely have their own personality. And of course, personalities can change. You can modify them, you can grow. And it doesn't necessarily have to make it faster, it can just make it the way you want it to feel. You want it to be louder, that's what you like about it? Well, that makes your experience better and that's all that matters. Cars like this, when you hear exotic or supercar, it becomes very intimidating that you think that that's untouchable. But as they've aged, you realize at the end of the day, it's still four wheels. They still have disc brakes, standard things that you would modify on a Honda Civic. When you used to hear these cars, it was, it was a rumor that, okay, a clutch job was gonna be $30,000 or, or an oil change was a couple grand. You'd have to take out a loan just for that. And in reality, it's the same. Albeit there's custom parts, but I will tell you right now, Something that blew my mind is the engine inside of here. Yes, it may be 20 plus years old, but it screams so high in the RPM. I didn't know that piston engines could go that high back then. And this isn't some low mile trailer queen only driven on the 19th Sunday of the year if the sky is clear and the humidity is under 20%. This thing is driven, daily driven. Look at the brake dust on the wheel. This thing is beat on by its owner, Modificata founder Jeff Siegel. And if you're gonna find somebody to modify Ferraris, you could do worse than a Le Mans winner like Jeff. And if you're gonna drive the cars, you could hardly do better than a place like the Concord Club here in Miami. This started its life as a base model, I use that term carefully, <laughs> base <laughs> model 355, but you've modified it considerably, almost in the spirit of the blue car. Could you talk a little bit about that? The blue car for me is like the, the ultimate manifestation of a 355. And that car has everything, but probably a little bit too much for the street. So what I wanted to do was pull the elements from that car that I thought were important to enhance the driving experience on this car. From that, the, the single most important thing was the quicker ratio steering rack. Anybody that's driven a stock 355 immediately would probably say that the steering is disappointing, that it's vague, it's slow, it lacks feel. And that was a huge change on the 355 Challenge Evo, was the first thing I did to this car. We've made changes to the suspension, to the anti-roll bars, same as that car. And then of course it has the louder exhaust. So in the Challenge series, there were two uh, exhausts that were offered. The blue car has straight pipes, that was the loud option, and then this car has the silenced option exhaust at the moment. Now, when it comes to modifying or tuning a car, in my world, like the JDM world, it's pretty much encouraged. 
is, it, is that the case with modifying Ferraris? Definitely not. I think the majority of the owners are all about the concourse. They're all about originality, making sure it's original paint, it's original service records. You know, if they could, they'd have the original air in the tires. That's not for me. I always held this car in really high regard growing up. I loved the way it looked. I loved the way it sounded. I loved the idea of it. I couldn't get enough of reading the reports and the way people talked about it. But when I finally drove one, to be honest, I was disappointed. It needed something more. So my whole goal here was to just strike that balance between, I guess, preserving what made the car cool to me in the first place, yeah. but making the driving experience worthy of uh, everything I had built it up to be. We just got the experience for me to drive this here. I definitely can't drive that car as well as it can be driven. If this is a step from the road car to this, that's probably another five steps in intensity. So let's do it. <laughs> Lamborghini guy, I have a Diablo, um, so I come from that side. If you're a Lamborghini guy and you have a Diablo, then I think to some degree you do get this car, um, because like a Diablo, there's a lot to love about it, and like a Diablo, they were sort of flawed at the time as well. Great looking car, great sounding car, ultimately it can be a lot of fun to drive, but um, a little bit troublesome, a little bit maintenance intensive. Um, hence the restoration on this one, not, not just being a coat of paint. The 355 Challenge was a gentleman uh, spec series that Ferrari started akin to the Lamborghini Super Trofeo now or the Porsche Carrera Cup. Um, so it was based on the 355 Berlinetta and at the time the cars were initially barely modified, really just the roll cage, um, fire suppression system, racing seats and that was it. Um, as the series evolved from 94 to the end of the 355 challenge, the cars got an Evo kit, and that's what this one is, which had um, a faster steering rack, which had some different cooling options, which has the rear wing, um, you know, just a series of updates, uh, different anti-roll bars. So they really enhanced the performance of the car. So this is kind of like the, let's say the ultimate iteration of the 355. like about the 355 is when you rev it. Just like it the video game. It just keeps going. Just keeps going. We need a longer straight. <laughs> and, and then with the age pattern gearbox, you really just want to keep going through the gears. It's much slower than a paddle shift car but so much more fun to drive because it challenges you. Um, and the car moves around. There's no traction control. There's no stability control. The ABS that it has is very, very crude by modern standards. Yeah. Um, so, you know, even without pushing too hard, you really feel the car's alive and you don't have to be going a million miles an hour to, to feel like you're at the limit because you're not. When you see cars like this aging, and your first instinct is to preserve. And what I would almost argue is that you can preserve it better by upgrading it. Now, hear, hear me out. The computer for this car was built when? Would you still use that computer now to do all of your current internet and email all that? No. I would rather have a modern computer controlling it if I was trying to preserve the car. Take the old stuff out of it, and sure, if you want to preserve that stuff, matching numbers or whatever, whatever weird obsession people have with collecting like that, sure, set those parts aside, but the car, you bought the car, you bought the experience, why not enjoy it? And maybe that's my excuse for making more power or making it handle better or whatever, but at the end of the day, it's still your car. And unless you're just saving it for somebody else, enjoy it.